Hello guys, this is Mantix Ray, and I'm showing you some resolution comparisons between native 1440p versus native PS2. We're going to be doing some frame rate um, uh, testing as well, and show you the best settings for Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex. Or if you guys say The Wrath of Cortex, it's fine by me, but whatever works. Now, this is actually the very first game I have to actually have the setting on. Now, this game actually has a weird blur in the game, and you need to set the interlacing mode to this one right here, Bob TFF. Uh, not BFF, TFF. Um, F5, so if you use F5 on the keyboard, it's like right there. Um, you can actually change it in-game, and I will show you. Now, let's show you the settings real quick. So we're using large frame buffer. Here's the resolution, the native resolution I'm using. Bilinear PS2, 16 times. Anisotropic filtering, mint mapping is off, full safest, configure hacks. Now, this game is very weird with the um, emulation in the game. You can use 16 times MSAA on this game, but there might be a bit of slowdown in the video. I'll show you some proof. Also, this game does need skip draw set to 2 or 3, whatever works. Uh, you just have to kind of test it out yourself, but I'm using 2 because I found that to be the best. Um, this game has some really strange artifacts in some of the levels. There are some water levels in the game that have strange artifacts. And there's also some more artifacts on these other levels that actually only have... There's only two levels that have these weird artifacts where none of the skip drawers, like 3, 4, 5, or even 1, don't fix it. Even with it off, don't doesn't fix it either. Actually, playing the game with off actually causes more issues. So you have to play it with 2. Um... There's two levels in the game that have the you have to play as a robot and the area is like all dark like one side's dark and the other side's dark and like the when you move around it's like kind of follows you. There's two levels that do cause major glitches on your screen and it's kind of unplayable. But anyway, uh, FXAA is on. Let's quickly show you. Now this game allows me to use MTVU, which is a hack that actually keeps this frame rate more sped up, keeps more consistent, like at a lock 60. Uh, you need three cores. I have six cores. By the way, the game does target 60 frames. It's one of the first games that I actually get to play at 16 times MSAA when the game when the game targets 60 frames in the game and actually holds up quite well. So this game is actually well optimized in a way, but it does have issues. Now, as we see, uh, here we go. Now we are here. We go. This game targets 640 by 448. There's my little uh, interlacing hack right there. But anyway, so 640 by 448. Now, as you see, the game's kind of like shaking up and down. It's ca it's kind of hard to see on the video, but anyway. So as you see, this is what it looks like. If you guys can, hopefully you guys can notice the 60 frames. But yeah, there's the 60 frames right there. Um, now actually, let's load up a level um, at 1440p. So what we're going to do is actually, we'll do this one right here. So here's the game at native 1440p, as you see. It looks a lot cleaner, and obviously looks doesn't look blurry at all, because I have the interlacing 5 uh, set on. Now, I'll quickly show you real quick. If I do this, as you see the screen shaking, now, when I do that again, it actually blurs it off. If I do it again, it shakes, and it has blur, and it shakes again when I press it again. Or, there you go, there's the shaking one. But when I press it again, now it's got scan lines. You can see the scan lines on his face. If I press it again, uh, it does the same thing, except kind of makes the screen less shaky. Press it one more time, bam, back to normal. Now, if you actually do this, uh, misc, as you see, here are the interlacing hacks right here, or the, I don't know if they're a hack, but as you see, number three, TFF, is actually the one that looks the cleanest. So just keep my word for it, take my word for it, tell everyone else to use that one, um, number three, and makes the game look perfectly fine. Let's load up this level real quick. All right, save state. All right, so this is um, basically what Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex looks like at nature 1440p. Uh, for a 2001 game, this game aged really, really well. Even the HUD looks really clean as well. So you look at the um, the text on the um, and the Apple. Look how um, look how clean that looks. Yeah, aged very well. So there's a bit of stuttering right there, but my frame rate has not gone down. It's still at 60 frames. Keep in mind, I am using 16x MSAA. Let's go up here and actually switch um, resolutions real quick. 
So as you see, this is um, native PS2. Um, you can see there's a bunch more aliasing on the ground on the far left there. You can even see the nitro. You see the text, the nitro. It's hard to see with that aliasing. Uh, if you look at the ones at the far back, way back there, uh, you can't even read the, the, the text, but if you go back to native 1440p, as you see, you can read the text very well. It's very clean. Um, yeah, so, so far the game's holding up really well. This game is very undemanding, but as I said, I do have Skip Draw 2 on, and this is actually one of the levels that you can play Skip Draw 0 off. You can play like most of the game with Skip Draw 0 off, but as I said, one more time I'll say it, there are some levels with Skip Draw that you need to have it set to 2 or 3, and there's also two levels in the game that are broken with Skip Draw on. So what you're going to do, if you ever do run into those levels and play this game on the PCSX2 and run into those levels, what you're going to do is basically slick to um, software mode and bam, your game is running perfectly fine. All the artifacts on the screen are gone. So you should be able to have a great time on this game. Let's go back here again. Anyway, that's pretty much it. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later.